Hey everybody, Patton here, welcome back. The NES and SNES classics don't have a lot of space for you to add more games to them. Just a little bit over 200 megabytes for each one. But you can expand that storage using a USB flash drive or a SD card, micro SD card, external hard drive when using what's called an OTG cable. An OTG cable plugs into the micro USB port in the back of your system and that's where you will load all your games from a flash drive or whatever storage you prefer. And with the newest version of HackGCE CE 3.5.3, it couldn't be easier. First thing you have to do is hack your system and I'll have a video in my description showing you how to do that. After you've completed hacking your system, you're going to open up HackGCE. CE. Normally when you're moving games from your PC to your system, you hit this synchronize selected games button down here. But when using a flash drive or some other form of storage, you want to use the export games button. So for this demonstration, I have the original 21 SNES classic games on the system itself. On the flash drive we're going to use, we added a bunch of games from different systems. We have some Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo, N64. NTFS is the preferred format for your storage. So all you have to do is plug your flash drive or whatever you're using into your PC. Hit the export games button. It's going to tell you to select a drive to export your games to. You're just going to select whatever volume is under your flash drive. This linked export option over here that's grayed out. That is if you put your HackGee program on the flash drive itself, which you can do. And if you do have HackG on your flash drive, it is highly recommended to use linked export. It makes exporting the games a lot faster. And when you're all done, you just hit OK. And you can see it's starting to copy the games from the PC to the flash drive. The speed of your flash drive does make a difference with how fast these games will transfer over. And you'll get this notification when the transfer is complete. If we look at our flash drive, you see we now have a HackG folder, a games folder, a folder for the region and the system that you're using. And if we go into a couple more folders, these are all of our games folders. If we open one of them up, you'll see this is the folder for GoldenEye 007 for N64. So it looks like everything transferred over correctly. Now I'm going to show you guys how to connect the flash drive and the OTG adapter to your system. Alright, so let's go over everything that you need. Obviously, you're going to need your SNES or NES Classic, some type of storage like a USB flash drive or an SD card. Which one you use depends on which one of these OTG cables you pick. You have the Octopus style which has three USB ports and one micro USB port for power. You'll notice this one has a switch between charge and OTG. Make sure it is always on OTG. And then you have the popular Inatech adapter. Once again this has three USB ports and also a couple card reader slots. So that's what's nice about the Inatech adapter. You don't have to take up one of your USB slots. If you want to use an SD or micro SD card, you would just put it into that port. The downside to using the Inatech is the insanely small power cord that comes with it. It is only this long. So you'll have to find a USB extender or keep whatever you're using to power your system really close to it. The Octopus adapter instead will use the core that came with your system for power and then you would put the other end into the back of your system. The downside to using the Octopus adapter are the very thin wires that they use. If you're not careful with this adapter, you can very easily break those wires and then your adapter is useless. I've been using two of these adapters for about a year and I haven't had any problems with them. I'm just very careful when using it. There are a couple other adapters out there that are pretty popular. There are the L-shaped adapters, which I don't recommend. On the L-shaped adapters, the male end USB part plugs directly into the system so there's nothing supporting it. It'll actually be weighed down and it can damage your system or the adapter. So why I like these multi USB adapters a little bit more than just like the L shaped adapter or the one with two USB ports. Not only can you attach a flash drive for more space, but with using the Wi-Fi supplicant mod, you can also attach a Wi-Fi adapter for online gaming through RetroArch or Retro Achievements. Or if you want to do some three or four multiplayer through RetroArch, you can attach a couple USB controllers. For this demonstration, we'll be using a regular flash drive. When using the Octopus adapter, you're going to take your flash drive, plug it into any of the USB ports. You're then going to take the cable that's powering your system and plug it into the power port. It's the one with the little lightning bolt on it. Then you're going to take the male end of your adapter and plug that into the back of your system. So when you're finished, it should look like this. You have power going into the adapter, flash drive going into the adapter, then the adapter plugged in to the back of your system. Using the Inatech adapter, everything is pretty much the same. You're going to take your flash drive, plug it into one of your USB ports. You're then going to take the power cord that came with the adapter, put it into the power port. You'll see that the Inatech adapter has a light that comes on when there's power going to it. Then, just like the Octopus adapter, you take the male micro USB port, plug that into the back 
of your system. So the final setup with the Initech adapter, you have the power cord and the flash drive going into the adapter, then the adapter plugging into the back of the system. I've attached the HDMI cable and a controller into the system. Now first I'm going to plug in the power cord with no adapter connected so you can see that it is running the original 21 games. So there you go, the original games that came with the system. Now we're going to power off. I'm going to unplug the power adapter, plug it into the octopus adapter, plug in the flash drive with our games, and now plug the octopus adapter into the system. So now that everything is hooked up, we're going to power on again and see what we get. Now we have all the games that we added to our flash drive. We have a lot of different games here, Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, regular Game Boy, N64, all running through the flash drive and OTG adapter. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video could be useful to you guys. If you're still having problems, feel free to join the developers Discord channel. I'll have linked in my description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.